today's word is important more important than i had thought it would be <laughs> see i've read this before in proverbs 24 in verse 33 it says a little sleep a little some slumber a little folding of hands you rest shall so shall your poverty come upon like a prowler and you need like an arm man is talking about a lazy man but i never associated laziness with the lack of seeking god i thought laziness was just an emotion related to procrastination you say a person is lazy and he doesn't want to do anything but the lord was teaching me about how the bible calls the people who don't seek after god lazy and we don't want to be lazy to be just like the bible says there's no entrance in heaven to those who lack courage that doesn't make sense does it but it does make perfect sense if you're filled with the holy spirit because when you're filled with the holy spirit you will not lack courage or boldness this is in the same vein same principle let's go to proverbs 24 32-34 i went by the field of the lazy man and by the vineyards of a man devoid of understanding that means that this person had a field but he was lazy he may have had a ministry but he is lazy he had a vineyard apart from the ministry he was bearing fruit but he was devoid of understanding and there was all overgrown with thorns its surface was covered with nettles its stone wall was broken down when i saw it i considered it well i looked on it and received instruction a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the hands to rest so shall your poverty come like a prowler and your need like an arm man since i received instructions when he looked upon it and then he says a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the hands to rest then what will happen so shall your poverty come upon like a prowler and you need like an arms like an armed man we're going to study about that about this from the word and this will instruct us to not be a lazy man according to the bible because a lazy man is a fool a lazy man is wicked or ungodly and does not think in the root common most common denominator ego that there is no god and the field could also be our heart when we receive the word when you come on sunday you see the word with gl- word with gladness but then the thorns choked i spoke about that many many years ago how your heart should be a good place for the word to grow and because on the parables that jesus gave check your heart to see if it's stony ground or the word is being choked by the world because you see the word with gladness says a man devoid of understanding let's go to romans 16:17 to 20 now i urge you brethren no those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned 
and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by smooth words and flattering speech, deceive the hearts of the simple. So you are not called to be simple in that way. <laughs> Do you understand? But it continues. For your obedience has become known to all. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf. I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. Remember, we were talking about fear of God, being afraid of God and having the fear of God. Same word, two different meanings, two different things. One, you should not be afraid of God, but you should have the fear of God. Yes, you should not be simple. Your heart should not be simple when it comes to not having understanding, yes? But you should be simple concerning evil, yes? Same word, yes? And the God of peace will crush feet shortly. And the grace of the, our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. If you are simple. Concerning what? Evil. Do you understand? Why should you be simple? Because the battle has already been won. Proverbs 9.4 Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. As for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, this is talking about wisdom and understanding, yes? So obviously God doesn't want you to be simple concerning his word or the wisdom of his word or his understanding of his word. Are you clear, yeah? In Psalm 119, 130, it says, the entrance of your words give light and it gives understanding to the simple. So you understand what it means, yes? So a man devoid of understanding, he thought he was doing good because he was simple. Oh, all he was doing was shirking of responsibility. And says a stone wall was broken down and there it was, all overgrown with thorns. His surface was covered with nettles and his stone was, was broken down. In Proverbs 25, 28, he says, Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Who does not have rule over his own spirit? Why are you downcast on my soul? Why are you disquieted without, within, within me? Said David. That means he had complete control. Do you have complete control of your emotions or have you given that those keys to something or someone else? If you have, you're a fool. As for me, I've given it to God. Things may not go as I planned today, this morning. Because of my greatness, I spilled coffee all over my shirt. You can't see it because I changed my shirt. Charles came first, I was wearing a different shirt. Then I, he came back, I was wearing a different shirt. In, in the, all that, I spilled coffee. A lot of things didn't go as planned. But God doesn't change, does he? Do you understand all this? strengthens my resolve to preach the word that this word will set you free. <laughs> Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down. Check your life without walls. Is anything allowed to wander in and go out? Or like Neo in the movie Matrix when bullets are shot at him, says what? No. What is it? No. And the bullets fall. No. Ding, ding. That's the authority we have when it comes to demonic spirits. I have noticed whenever I don't 
do anything about the spirit of strife that I see floating around this neighborhood of mine. And it comes, there's almost always something that causes tension in the house, in my house. So I have learned every time I sense it, I bind it. I say, you have no right to come into my property. And the neighbor's dogs bark and the neighbors bark like a dog. All that is there. But unless the Lord tells me that's not my problem, is it? Who has no rule over his own spirit. Don't be lazy. A little sleep, a little slumber, the folding, a little folding of the hands to rest. This is not godly rest, but fleshly vacation. When people in the world are sick and tired of being sick and tired, they'll take a what? Vacation. They'll go to some place where they think they'll get rest. Nonsense. Where can you go to get rest? The rest is from the Lord, but this is not that rest. There's a time for everything. God tells you when to rest and when not to rest. In Ecclesiastes 3.1, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Yesterday the Lord told me, rest. So I didn't have, I was supposed to minister to a couple of people and then I was supposed to have a Bible study. I didn't have any of that. But he told me to record one song out of the whole worship. I did that. And he gave me the energy to process it and upload it and whatnot. There's a time for everything. You have to be guided by the Lord, yes? Here's what happens when you're not and you seek your own rest. Remember, a man who doesn't have control of his own spirit is like what? Walls, a city with the walls broken down. Anybody can come in and go. In the olden days, city had walls. For you to enter the city, you need to go in. Just like today, if you want to go into a country, you need a passport, yes? Do you understand? Just like that. Let's go to 2 Samuel 11, 1 to 2. It happened in the spring of the year, at the time when kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Amnon and besieged Rabbah. But David remained in Jerusalem, at Jerusalem. Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. There are things in the Old Testament for us to learn. It says that in Romans 15, 4. I taught you about that before. This is one of them. He'll teach us from David's life. At the time when kings go out to battle, David remained in his house, in his palace in Jerusalem. He decided <coughs> he decided his own rest. He decided maybe you should retire. He decided, not God. This caused a grave sin. Adultery with Bathsheba. Why? Because she was always bathing. That's what she's called Bathsheba. Yes? Uh, this is not part of the Bible, yeah? Just saying. This caused a grave sin. 
but that was not it. This also led later to exposing his other weaknesses. All because he was lazy. David did not act responsibly to bring justice when his daughter was raped by his son, causing Absalom to take matters into his own hands. All this because he was lazy. I looked on it and received instruction. Do you understand? Your poverty and your need. Your poverty and your need. It is what the devil had planned. It will come to pass. Don't be lazy. Your poverty is not something foreign. It's within you. This laziness exposed what was within David. As a consequence, all this happened. Do you understand? So don't be lazy, yes? Poverty. God is not poor. Not the last time I checked. In Isaiah 48, 17. Since thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I'm the Lord your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. That profit doesn't mean money alone in your relationship and everything. God leads us to profit, yes. This morning, I got news that one of my aunts died. She was uh, my uncle's, my father's brother's wife. When I, at the time of our marriage, she acted against us marriage. All this was there. Yet the Lord told me to call them up last week. And I did that out of obedience. And then I prayed for that family and I prayed for her. Especially for the family, for my uncle and for his daughter. God will teach you how to profit. And then I find out that my uncle has been listening to my sermons without me knowing it because he was quoting certain things that he could have only understood if he had, was watching these things. He was saying some things that I said about my mother, yeah? Do you understand? But uh, the Lord will teach you how to profit. He'll tell you, okay, call this person, call that person. From there onwards, when it's investing in something, God tells you, invest in that or this or don't. God will teach you how to profit. See, God, there's not... That doesn't belong to a lazy fellow. It's an active thing, yes? <coughs> Need. So shall your need come upon. What does Psalm 23 1 say? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want or I shall not be in need. Yes? Do you understand? When you seek him, he's your shepherd. Why? Why do you seek him? Because then you listen to his voice. He'll tell you where to go, what to do. Yes? If he's not your shepherd, then... If he says, go here, you will go somewhere else. And the thing is, the devil will make you go somewhere else if you have offense in you. That is his bait. Remember, I told you about that. I think last week or the week before that, I'm going to be talking more about that. It says, when I saw it, I considered it well. I looked on it and received instruction. This instruction is not just any knowledge. If you go to Daniel 12, 4, 
But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Yes, it can be the knowledge of God, but we live in the information age, yes? If you want to know something about something, all you have to do is, what? Google it. Now, there, Bing is coming out with artificial engine intelligence, and it's supposed to <coughs> overtake Google. Some other browsers have already done that. So what I mean to say is, now it came to a point where it intelligently searches things out for you. That is information. And I, I told you this to some of you, that they, a pastor used this artificial intelligence to create a sermon based on a topic, based on the Bible. And that machine created a sermon for him. And he spoke it out in the church to see if anybody would notice a difference. And nobody did. <laughs> Was that led by the Lord or by the machine? Do you understand? Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. That is not the knowledge. It is the knowledge of the real God. Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. It starts with the fear of the Lord. And it is the beginning of true knowledge. Psalm 86, 11. Teach me your way, O Lord. I'll walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. What does it say? Why is that word used? Unite my heart. Because our hearts are not united in the fear of the Lord. It wants to obey God, but damn, it also wants to do things. Unite my heart. That was my prayer to the Lord some time ago. Before I knew the scripture existed, I said, Lord, I want to be a shepherd after your own heart, but within me are these things that battle. Show me, speak to me, so that I can minister from your glory and you get all the glory. And then he showed me, that is uniting your heart. That is putting away your flesh, seeking God. It took some time for me to do that. It's not like, ah, and the Lord downloaded it. No, there are times when the Lord do, does that, yes? Unite my heart to fear your name. Why? Because I knew that if I went my way and I ministered in my way, this would bring no glory to him. And then I will just be satisfying my flesh. Am I clear? So unite my heart to fear your name. His way, his truth. Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of heart. What is that? The Word of God. The living Word of God, which is powerful. What does Philippians 1.9 say? And this I pray, that your love may abound more and more in the knowledge and all discernment. All this is connected. The love discernment is based on what? The Word of God. Do you understand? Now, why I'm saying this is to put these things so that it, up in the air so that you can understand what I'm talking about. 
It's about you being not lazy. We will not be lazy. Yeah? It's about the instructions. Yeah. What does Hebrews 5.14 say? But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is those who by reason have used their senses and exercised to discern what good and evil. There's that word discern again. With the word of God, you must discern. Take time. When you have a problem, take time. Like I said, put Jesus in the middle and it'll separate. Do you understand? If it's clinging together, drop the truth. Then you will know where it stands, yeah? Don't be lazy because a lazy man is a fool. It's equal to the wicked, to the ungodly who say there is no God. Take time. Count the cost. If you don't take time and you want the pastor to spoon feed you all the knowledge, all you have is 18 years, yes? What will happen then? Go to Proverbs 26, 3. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the fool's back. Believe me, you don't want to be in that shoe, yeah? What does verse 14 say in Psalm? I mean, 1 and 2 say in Psalm 14. Fool said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable work. There is none who does good. Of course, you don't consider, we don't consider ourselves in that category, do we? But it continues. The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand who seek God. There's a comma I have to understand. Who understand this principle. And because of that, they're not passive. They seek the Lord actively so that they're not deceived. In Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call to me, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. This is not a passive seeking or calling. Spend time with the Lord. In 2 Timothy 2.15, he says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Be diligent. Spend time with God. Otherwise, it's nobody's fault but yours. Do you understand? If the Lord wakes you up, don't go back to sleep. Spend time with Him. Be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit in whatever ways the Lord is dealing with you. Do you understand? Don't be lazy. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. I wrote about this last week, where in some Bibles it says, I know the plans that He has for us. The problem with using the word plans is that the plan is, okay, already active, already done. So if that plan doesn't work, then God has to have a plan B. But he says, no, beyond that, before that, I know the thoughts I have. God doesn't make it a plan. You do. I hope I'm clear. Yes? God has his thoughts. You, by faith, make that into a plan. Don't be lazy. Yes, there's a breakthrough now. Do you understand? Yes? Who makes these thoughts into plans? You do. By faith, yes? So don't be a fool. Because a fool is equal to wicked. Those who are wicked, there's no rest for the wicked, yes? They're ungodly. 
who said there is no God, yes? So don't be a lazy man. Who says there is no God? Is that clear? You see how it's connected. Don't condemn yourself. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Don't think this laziness is delegated someone else to a lazy fellow. If you don't see God, then you, you're passive about this. Oh, God knows my heart. He will lose it. No. <laughs> you got another thing coming. Seek Him. Spend time with Him. Jesus reconciled us to God our Father and gave us the Holy Spirit. Not so that we can be lazy. So that we can actively pursue His kingdom and what He has and what He wants done. Remember, His thoughts need us to become His plans. Am I making sense? Instead of that, we're only saying, what about me, what about me, what about me? <laughs> Do you understand? Yes? This is the importance of not being lazy and being diligent about seeking Him. It's not just to avoid danger or anything. It is a pleasurable thing to seek Him, to know that He grants us the desire of our hearts. This morning, Joel forgot the USB thing, yeah? The Lord told me, no, you have something else to record your voice in. So I thought, okay, before that I told him, now you have to go back home and pick that up, yes? So he said, no, record your voice in this. Like that, certain things the Lord is telling me. And some, some of the things, I think, why is it not working as you told me? I said, well, these are the things that needs to be done so that other people will understand to seek Him and not be lazy. Because most people depend on me to feed them the Word. Hallelujah. Don't be spoon-fed. I'm, what, 54 now, 55 almost. And if I'm still spoon-fed by my mother, you would think that is abnormal, yes? But look at yourself. Consider how you are spoon-fed when it comes to the Word of God. Seek the Lord and live. Amen? Spend time with Him. He'll do you good. You'll also do me good, yes? Because then you'll pray for me more, yes? Hallelujah. Let's stand up in the presence of God.